Welcome to the Viking Horn, official podcast of the Nottingham Vikings Ball Hockey Club. You can find out more about our club on our website and on all social media. For YouTube channel viewers, you'll see the links on screen. Anyway, let's sound the Viking Horn. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Viking Horn. I'm Pete Allen and with me today I've got Mike, Benny and Dan. Um, we've been away for a little while. Uh, I think we can say mainly because we've been busy or away on holidays at the same time. And to be honest with you, there's not really been that much to talk about hockey-wise or ball hockey-wise, that is, anyways. So we've had a bit of a break. Um, we're back now. Uh, so we're going to try and get some more podcasts in coming up. But so first one back for a while. Let's let's get on with it. Uh, Mike, you're at home. Dan, you're in Liverpool. Uh, mm-hmm. Have a nice time in Liverpool. Yeah, not too bad. Not too Good. bad. Good to be Good home. Good stuff. Yeah, wicked. Benny, where are you, mate? I'm uh, on a secret location somewhere. Would you like to reveal that secret location to us? I am at your house in your garage. <laughs> of course, of course you are. What are you doing in my garage, Benny? I've pretty much been living here for the past uh, few months. I've been uh, helping you out in the garden, mate. When, when you say helping me out, it's probably been mainly you doing the work. I've just got to, I want to clarify, I don't want to get that mixed up. But you've been doing most of the work. Explain explain to everyone what you've been doing. Um, so you've, you've bought a new house, as you mentioned in previous podcasts. Uh, yeah. The garden was, uh, as you imagine, a new build garden to be, just uh, freshly laid turf. And you and your wife, Lizzie, said, I want some decking. So I thought I'd come give you a hand with that. Yeah, and um, the reason Benny ended up doing this decking was I actually got quoted £10,000 to do this decking job, or close to £10,000, which we thought, well, we only had a budget of about £100, so we thought that's not really going to work for us. So what we did, I, I asked Benny to do this job for if he was able to help me do this job for us while he was off furlough at work. Um, Benny politely said, you know, get me the materials and I'll, and I'll give you hand and, and do it. So uh, I say we, he has been doing it along the, Be, uh, Dan has also helped out at various stages. I um, did most of it to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so. Um, Benny helped me out. Yeah, but, but so the, the new business is on its early stages, guys. Uh, so uh, how's, how's things with that? Are we looking at, we're still looking at the landscaping business. Yeah, well, it's a bit of landscaping. You know, we just um, we're sort of, you know, we've we've been approached to do a similar situation of the Golden Gate Bridge as well. Um, so we are going <laughs> up in the world. Um, it's just you know people can't really afford us at the minute. So yeah, it's tough times out there. And um, I like to say, Be- Benny, all all Benny asked of me was. Um, no money, just buy him a nice uh, American football jersey and he'll be happy with it. So, yeah, uh, I keep seeing on the spotted version of my village on Facebook, anyone, does anyone know anyone who could do decking? And um, I, I keep thinking about tagging you in it, to be honest with you. You've done a fantastic job. And to be honest, thank you. I, couldn't, I, just, honestly, I couldn't thank you enough. It's, it's been brilliant. We've had we've spent, it's gave us an excuse to spend plenty of time as a group and uh, we've, we've, together. So, yeah, it's a top job. Well done. But, New, are, you actually gonna, are you going to let him out the basement when he's actually finished then? Have you just got him locked in there until he finishes? Well, you this is... You put food under depends. the door for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of, bit of bread and water under the door. Um, again, he's quite easily pleased with that. So we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll, I'll, um, I'll evaluate the job he's done at the end. And if, if it's good, if it's at least a, an eight out of ten, he, he can come out. And enjoy the rest of his life. Sounds fair. So, I think so. Um, so yeah, as uh, people may or may not have seen, uh, it was my myself and my wife's wedding anniversary this past week. I was away um, in Yorkshire for most of it. So just a little, little bit of a story. Some obviously didn't go to plan from my side of things. Um, so my wife is very, um, let's say. 
she's she's she thinks cards are very important like when, when buying a card for an, for an event i very much rush these sort of things uh as i don't feel it, it's just there it's just the card you're writing it the end um she actually got me two cards because she couldn't decide which one was better so i end up with two cards but anyway moving on so I, I used a, a well-known online card making site to get mine. I think I might have been at work at the time when I was doing it uh, on my phone on, on a break or something. And I seen this card. It had, um, it's a picture. It's got, it's got like a picture of a park on it with roads, roads going through it. Uh, you could put your own photos in. Um, and you could also edit, edit the top. I bought Happy Anniversary. Uh, 16th September 2017 to forever and then also uh, edited where the um, where we got married but then with three photos okay so you're with me so far um, and then so I got I did that got it delivered and it came the other day and then before we went away on holiday for the week um, I decided to open the envelope and this was the evening before we went away so uh, I opened the envelope, opened the card up to um, check it was okay. And it wasn't okay because what I'd actually done was I bought a card. The bits that I'd edited were fine, but I bought a card which was dedicated to a couple's lovely holiday in Sicily, <laughs> which I've never done. Or So, <laughs> so what happened was, as you, I don't know if you can see it there, right? There it is. Oh, so all these little roads in that here have all got landmarks uh, and their, their home. It was their first home then. It was based on going on a holiday in Sicily. They've got landmarks in Sicily written on them and roads and, and things like that. It was, yeah. So what I had to do last minute was I had to replace, I had to cut out a load of little rectangular pieces of paper and change those to our first house, our, where we live now, um, and all our holidays that we've been on, on and the year. Um, and then when we got engaged, um, and I thought, I, 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 you know what, I had to tell her like the day before the anniversary, I guess, yeah, I've got you a card, but it didn't all go to plan. Because I thought, oh, you know, I'll change it. And it means all, all roads have led to this, this moment, our three year anniversary. And um, it went down better than I thought it would. To be honest with you, she was she was she was really impressed with it. And that, like how I, she wondered why I was a good half an hour down in the garage while while she was serving up tea that night. Um, <laughs> she hear the um, hear noises, banging, and and everything, trying to get this card sorted. But yeah, it was one of those thick moments. I and I, I rushed buying the card and. If I've learned anything in future, it means I will uh, probably take more care in buying cards and thinking about it a bit more. Which I had a similar issue um, on a Valentine's Day card a couple of years ago uh, where you call it a thick moment. I refer to them as blind moments. Um, right. Where I went Understandable on, with you, yeah. Ah, uh, you know, cheers, Pete, rub it in. Uh, <laughs> uh, I um, went online, edited the card, and, you know, I was sat on the judo mat ready to trade. And I was making a card up. And um, anyway, the card came. It was, you know, two astronauts with our faces on. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a win of that. She even forgot Valentine's Day, which made it even more of a win. Um, got me more points. But um, the thing was, she, she then opened the card. And you know what it's like. They've got different sort of templates where you can edit and stuff like that. And um, one of them I did not edit and completely did like overlooked, let's say. So she opens a card and it goes, To Thomas, I love you to the world, to the moon and back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to be for Thomas. No, <laughs> no. I've never sent a Thomas a Valentine's Day card, but no. I did that day. You did that day. Oh, and. Wow. Um, it makes you wonder, like, why why was it Thomas inside? I don't know. He just must it be could... a romantic sort of guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably, would it, I don't know, would it have been better to have your 
your print here to mm. your print here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Elite. Oh, well. Yeah. Thomas a bit of love. That's good. Every Thomas needs a bit of love, I think. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, Benny, what's got yeah. you frothing at the mouth this week? What's got Benny frothing this week? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's an interesting one. I've got to be careful how I uh, word this. After the last one, um, the well-known <laughs> uh, carvery chain, um, we'd done the last podcast just before um, the Eat Out to Help Out campaign came out. Um, that well-known carvery chain has uh, since had to extend that offer while other, other restaurants don't, because apparently my words have hurt their profits over that month. So the company that I'm going to target this week, I'm not going to name them in any shape or for, any way, shape or form, because I don't want to hurt them financially, although they <laughs> have caused us a few issues. And it's the whole reason why I'm sat in your garage, mate, and you've not let me out. Yeah. Because although I've helped you with your decking, it's not yet finished. There's one board left to go. And that's because this timber yard, who I won't mention, um, they decided that although I asked for 47 boards, they'd give us 46, uh, but give us a little bit extra per board and said, oh, we've, give, we've made it up in the boards that you uh, we've given you. Thanks. I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll just all those little <laughs> bits together, all those 15, 20 centimetres, I'll put them all together for you. And then you can have one final board with lots of little bits together for you, like a jigsaw puzzle. Is that a joke or what? If I ask for 47, I want 47. And to top it off, not only did you want me to do your decking, you also wanted me to do your slabbing as well. This well-known builder's uh, thing for the house, uh, the housing uh, company that you bought it from, decided they'd uh, lay your slabs for you in your garden, but won't do the slabs all the, way, all the way to the end. They'll leave 10 missing. You know what? Just for fun. I mean, <laughs> either lay the slabs or don't. The fact that I then had to go out there, dig up their mess and lay those slabs was an absolute joke. These builders, either the builders that built the house or the builders yards that sent us the timber are doing a half job. Either do the whole thing or don't do it at all. The reason why the econ economy is going backwards at the minute is because they are do delaying everything they do by giving you half of what you need. It's almost as if they've seen a business opportunity by doing half the job. <laughs> yeah. What they're failing to see is that business opportunity is now going to other people. I should be charging for this. <laughs> Instead, I'm locked in your bloody basement. I think, I think we should be charging for this, Benny. We should be charging for We should as business partners. We should be. Yeah, yeah. I, dug, I did dig at least one hole. In the right place. Ish. <laughs> yeah, that, so, that's what's got me frothing this week is builders. <laughs> I thought it was going to be. To be fair, I thought it would, may have been the fact that I'd given you a cup of tea and it had milk before water. <laughs> Who does that? Who puts oh, the milk in first? That's a leap. How I want my milk. No, that's <laughs> the thing is, I asked him. I asked him. I gave him the tea. Asked him if he liked it, and he was like, "Yeah, it was, it was lovely, thanks." And then, and then I told him. So, if anything, I quashed the rumor or uh, a debate that it's better to put your milk in before water or not. No, wrong. Get gone. Get him walking. <laughs> really, it doesn't matter as long as it's in a Viking's mug. It's, no, uh, it tastes great. Oh, nice segue. Yeah, yeah. Is that subtle? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sticking, uh, sticking with the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you, what, it's terrible. This this product placement, Lark, is yeah, yeah, yeah. really I, bad, I'll, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> what about on now? Just um, so you know, the generate mugs are fifty p cheaper, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the subject of uh, well, uh, briefly on the food of. Uh, subjects of drink um, and food. I've um, tried out some more f food since the last uh, since that post last podcast. Mm. Would you like to know what it is? Definitely. Okay, so there's been a few actually. Um, obviously, you all made a big deal about the fact I'd not, I, I didn't eat very much, um, so so to speak. Um, I think the big one uh, I tried for the first time was a Chinese takeaway. Mm. 
And I did that in the presence of Dan Libby. They actually, they they paid for the opportunity for me to do this. It was an honour. It, it was. Uh, what did I have? Um, I had uh, chicken, these chips. I had chips. <laughs> I had chips. Yeah. Um, chicken chow mein, uh, chicken balls, and chicken wings. So there's a common theme there. Um, I mean, it was nice. It it was nice. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, it was something I probably should have tried a long time ago. But what, chicken and chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. I, Dan Dan let me try. Um, oh, what is it? It was sort of bread. Prawn toast. Prawn toast sort of mm. bread. Um, yeah, prawn toast. I tried that. I didn't fancy it at all. Um, I'm not a big fish or seafood fan. So um, yeah, I tried that. Um, didn't you have garlic bread the other day as well? I mm. did. Garlic bread and rice, I'll have you know. First time. Rice doesn't taste of anything. Don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> um, but garlic bread was all right. Um, yeah, I feel like I've opened more doors by, by trying those things. So, yeah. But the big one, the big one definitely was the, the Chinese takeaway. I'll, and... Um, yeah, I'd have it again, put it that way. It was nice. It was all right. What, what's next on the list then? What are you going to go try next? I don't know. You, you decide. I don't know. India. I reckon we, I reckon we should go out for a curry. Yeah. Mm. Well, see, uh, Dan, Dan has challenged me to this also. So this, he said I should try the, the Indian curry. Yeah. So I've definitely... No, right. Maybe maybe next time we do a podcast from an Indian, from, from an yeah. Indian restaurant. Well, at least do a video live. Yeah. Or do, do a video recording me eating it for the first time. Yeah. Straight go chili curry. Yeah, I think so. Do you like, do like, do you like lime? Have you tried uh, lime before? I've had it like lime. I've had it dripped on yeah. things. But I don't, I, I, I couldn't say I tasted it. Oh, uh, well, it we'll, get you, we'll get you some lime pickle because that's really nice. Mm. Lime. Yeah. <laughs> Just before you, you know, speak. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I believe you there, but whatever. <laughs> right, so it's probably it's probably time that we, we spoke a bit about ball hockey. Um, mm. We're hearing a lot of things about uh, lockdowns coming into certain areas, uh, and I think it would be easy for us to think that the whole waiting around for, for play to commence again is probably being put back more because of this. Um, Benny, I'm going to come to you first. Can you explain to us what's going on and where we're at currently with the whole ball hockey situation based on the information we've been given as a club? Yeah, so um, in, interesting enough, in the last few days, we've had a bit more information as to uh, where we can go with this. So the league, uh, we still don't know if it's going to recommence or not. It depends on if there's an appetite, an appetite there with the clubs. But we've now been given um, a phased return to play. So we're currently in phase one, um, phase one until Monday, actually. Um, and that phase is where we can train outdoors, but we have to be in pods of six, uh, socially distanced, and the pods need to be distanced away from each other as well. Um, as of uh, Monday, uh, we can then go into uh, 30 people together outdoors. Um, so we now start to get a bit of taste, a bit of a taste of team training again. Um, we can maybe even go into things like a scrimmage and stuff like that. Um, phase three will then see us return back indoors. So instead of playing on uh, a nice concrete floor with lots of stones everywhere, which builders probably didn't finish in their job when they built it, um, the uh, we can now start to play on a nice uh, laminate floor. Uh, again, in pods of six. Uh, and then over time, we'll then be able to play in bigger teams of 30 again uh, before we can then start to take it to the opposition and start to get that W again. Mm. Yeah, Mike, Mike, I'm just going to come to you quickly on that. I mean, um, from, a, from another playing point of view, it's been quite frustrating for me. Um, I felt regarding, I'm watching now, um, so your Saturday, Sunday league football teams, for example, they're they're playing matches again, and they have been for the last few weeks. And I obviously understand why ball hockey hasn't played again to a point, but it's been frustrating for me um, personally that 
these games include a lot more players than ball hockey does at the time. I know it's outdoors and we're indoors and things like that, but I think the frustrating thing for me has been, without knowing too much of the politics behind it, is I'm watching teams and team sports with a lot more individuals with, with contact playing games again. Have you found this as, as like frustrating to, to watch and where we can't really do anything like that as a, as a player? Yeah, it's inconsistent across the sports, but then, you know, we've all had to um, apply to the DCMS uh, government agency looking at, you know, all of these sports. And, you know, we've got a big thank you really out to um, Ball Hockey UK and Rob and the team because, you know, they, they spend a lot of time putting all the documentation together and applying to uh, DCMS to, you know, to get us to the stage now where we're looking at back to play, which is fantastic. But yeah, it's frustrating when you see in other sports that are able to um, compete already and, um, you know, the, and the numbers are a lot more. But I think there's light at the end of the tunnel. But I suppose it's just hoping really that all of this lockdown shenanigans at the moment, um, you know, it doesn't worsen. And well, we, we take one step forward and several steps back, really. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Benny's touched on outdoor as well. I think the frustration as well has just been not just the concrete, but we had a practice outdoor last week and the light is becoming a real issue. Um, you know, where everyone gets back from work and we start probably playing about seven o'clock and I think we're losing the light by about, what, quarter to eight, Benny? Yeah, about oh. quarter to eight, if not a little bit earlier now. I mean, we had um, in our pod, Last week we had um, Kerry in goal, and we were just sort of taking shots around the goal. And to put it this way, we couldn't tell whether we were actually hitting the goal or not. So how Kerry was even seeing the ball to try and save it, I've got no idea. But um, yeah, and the, and the strip lights that um, Benny put up, they they helped a little bit, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to get indoors if we can. But there's still a lot of work to do. You know, we've. Not, not all venues are open. I think as part of the problem with the league restarting or, or starting a new season is not all venues can open yet. We've got risk assessments that they need to complete, that we need to complete. So there's still a lot of work, but hey, you know, we're making progress. So um, yeah, that's yeah, brilliant. Of things really. Yeah, and I, I do want to just echo what you said uh, regarding uh, Ball Hockey UK, uh, Rob and, and the team there. Um, I think the information that we've received as a team, a club and league, everything that's been going on, the information given and uh, how often it's been given has been fantastic and everyone's been kept in the loop. There's been very detailed um, there's been detailed outlines of all the rules that we need to, to adhere to. Um, and I think as a club, we, we couldn't thank, thank them all enough. I think they've done a fantastic job to keep everyone in the loop. So, um Dan, coming from a different sort of perspective with uh, the gym, um, mm. just I just want to uh, want you to just talk about the frustrations you've had to well, um, deal with regarding the whole thing, um, because you, the out the guidelines for the gym has been a little bit different. So you're allowed back in the gym now. Mm. So you just want to talk about, but it was a very frustrating time for yourself, Generate Academy. It was um, over the period. Obviously, we. Um, adapted pretty quickly and was doing outdoor training just to give people the opportunity to stay fit and mentally sort of switched on and engaged. Um, however, you know, there was periods where it was like, you know, people had come, then, you know, people would get a bit anxious or, and also like where, where the facility was, you know, it was, uh, oh, you can open again. Oh, wait, no, sorry, you can't. And it was just a bit, you know, as, as, you guys are just says like one step forward, two steps back at times. Um, however, we are getting a bit of consistency back at the gym now. Um, it's still, you know, it's still, you know, you're going to be nowhere near how you were pre-lockdown for a little while because, you know, there's now new uh, guidelines, but then there's also that sort of indoor anxiety from people now um, and sort of, you know, where the weren't, the weren't that before. Um, you know, because of the situation and also how like the media have dealt with things, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's not, it's not great for a lot of people and that's going to go on for a long time, I think as well, you know, some people may never want to go back inside the gym again, you know, because 
you know, I totally get the fact, um, you know, that they've had to keep gyms shut or, or certain facilities shut for uh, one thing or another. And I know there's that question, that attitude of, oh, well, if you can go to the pub and have a skin full, why can't you go to the gym? You know, but then when, when you're looking at taxes and how the government make their money, even as an athlete, I still spend more money on alcohol every month than a gym membership. So, you know, that's where they're making the money and that's why they've kept them open. Um, but also all the rules and regs around running a gym um, and different things like that. You know, good old Matt Hancock. I won't really say what I think of him, but, um, you know, when, when he comes out with phrases like, oh, it's so simple, I can say it in a sentence, you know, and these are the rules. And then one sentence just pulls up so many more questions, to be honest. And um, one one thing um, which was reiterated to me recently was the fact like, oh, because of the square footage of the gym, you know, you're allowed uh, 30 people in organized activity in there. You know, however, you know, we're only sticking to 10 people max. But, um, you know, however, if there's spectators in there, so for example, parents who drop their kids off to us, if there is spectators, you're then down to this rule of six. So we're, we're not having any spectators because it takes away from the amount of people we can have in the gym. However, that's one thing that people need to realize is your spectators bring down because they're not part of the organized activity. They then change your rules and regs completely, which is just mental. It's just like, it's just so, it's just weird. It's weird, you know, and I, I don't actually believe the majority of these politicians and scientists making these rules have ever been into a gym by the sound of things or, no. you know, done any sort of activity because some of the rules they're coming out with are just absolutely balmy. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think the, uh, when I, I spend very little time listening to the news and what, what those people say, that rightly or wrongly, it's just, it's my decision, but um, it's how I like to do it. But when I, what I do here, it just seems a lot of, regarding sports and other things with this whole situation, it, it's a lot of a lot of talking without saying much at all, so to speak. Mm. And that's the way I look at it. But uh, from a ball hockey point of view, um, I, I, I get Benny and Benny and Dan, uh, once you've done the garden, um, any chance you could build um, an outdoor rink with um, floodlights? I mean, that would ah, be the easy answer. Leave, yeah, leave it with us. Leave it with yeah. us. We'll, we'll, we'll pull quotes together. Brilliant. Oh, six I mean, million. <laughs> Excellent. But like I say, hopefully we're, we're all back playing again soon. But for the meantime, just everyone uh, follow the rules and uh, hopefully we're, we're back as playing games sooner rather than later. Um, back to the Vikings uh, briefly. I just thought it'd be good to uh, give a mention. Obviously, we've been training uh, back for a little while now. Uh, Benny, I, I, I wanted to give you the time to just mention that the new guys that have been uh, coming down and, and taking part, I think it's important to say how well they've been doing. Now, I've um, obviously met them all now myself and they're, they're top guys and girls. Um, I've just let's have a little discussion about them. Tell, tell us who they are and, and how much it's meant that they've been coming down. Yeah. So we, we have um, had probably our best summer period when it comes to recruitment. Um, should that be the social media side of things and the website that Mike's uh, been heavily involved with, uh, or the fact that we were training outdoors and we're more visual to people than being in a sports hall, or a combination of both. But what that's meant is actually we've had quite a few new people come down. Um, <clears throat> we've had, uh, as Mike said, Kerry, the goalie. Um, she comes from an ice hockey background. She's played ice hockey in net for some time. Uh, she's said that she's interested in signing. Um, Jaw is out on her though. I mean, she turned up to training on Friday without a key part of her kit, which was the pads. I mean, and <laughs> I, I, I know they're not. A, I know they're a small part of the kit. I mean, they're not that big at all, are they? The leg pads. So it's it's understandable that she was able to walk past them, but the fact that she then had to drive home to get them, and then came back. So although she was forgetful. There was dedication to the fact that she uh, she she came back. It reminded me of the time that when we went to uh, to Manchester and we had our old goal, goalie Matt 
um, yeah. who, as we got in the uh, change room, said, lads, I forgot my blocker and catcher. Yeah. Um, and then we're having to beg Kit from the opposition's goalie just so we can play a game. Yeah, so I saw definitely. similarities in the pair of them there. Um, <clears throat> we've then had her fella, AD, come down. He's from a roller hockey background, so he's managed to pick it up fairly easily. Just got to get used to moving his feet rather than rolling around on skates. We've had people from two people from Tamworth come down, Adam and Kenny. Um, the pair of them have played five-a-side football and long-distance running. Both are great assets when it comes to playing team sport because you know team play and then the long-distance running means that you can see out of a 45-minute game. Um, we've had Ollie, who's just returned back from China uh, at the start of the pandemic for the obvious reasons of what was going on. Prime school teacher. Uh, he's built, so he's got quite a lot of strength and size to him. Uh, he's played ice hockey, so again, he's got that natural skill there. Uh, we've had uh, Alex come down, who's relatively new to the sport, um, but he's really keen to learn and go from there. Um, you forget the assistant that, coach. I fear that I may be missing people now. Oh, the yeah, assistant yeah. coach, of course. Well, I mean, it depends who you talk to there, because in his eyes, I'm probably his assistant coach being Joe um, Joe uh, he started uh, probably more towards the beginning of the year while we were indoors and he's he turned up as a right handed right hand stick player uh, did a one to one with me and we realised actually he's better suited as a left handed player um, and since then his development has gone on really well and probably the, to say about all of these guys that have come down their development on all of them is probably been the quickest I've seen any de any uh, players turn up and play. Is that they've turned up, they've they've got up, they've got on with it. They've become really good players. They're actually forcing their way into the side now, and it's given me some serious headaches as to what the next season's roster will look like once we've completed this one. Yeah, brilliant. So good to have all the newcomers down and uh, enjoying being with the Vikings in long. Anyone else who's interested in coming down, just get in touch with us and uh, you're more than welcome to come and train. Um, yeah, so um, it's also worth mentioning there's been a new team um, coming to the fray in the break that in time that we've been away. Uh, there's a new team called the Nottingham Raptors, which are um, a female-only team. Um, we have actually, I have actually contacted uh, someone who set up the, the team or helped set up the team, Helen, um, I've not had anything back yet because we'd like to get some more information on what's happening there. But we know a few of the players and uh, the kit and everything that they've got. It looks amazing. So uh, if anyone knows Helen, uh, tell her we've got in touch with her and tell her to get back in touch as soon as we can. We'll kind of get on the show and ask a few questions about it and and uh, find out more about the Raptors. But well done on, on doing that. It's a fantastic thing. More teams, more people getting involved in ball hockey. So uh, excellent work. Um Anyone, uh, anyone been watching any ice hockey at all? Because there's been a few uh, live feeds, and obviously the Stanley Cup still going strong. It's the the finals about it's, it's the finals about to start now, isn't it? We've come, we've got down to two. I've got to be honest, I haven't watched much. Um, we've just had game one. Yeah, don't tell me the score. Don't tell me the score. Oh, okay. Right. okay, I don't know the score, but um, yeah, but you know what, um, I. As the ducks aren't in it, I I I've not really took that much interest. I've been more following the uh, the basketball, the Lakers, and the because uh, they're in it for the first playoffs, first time in ten years. So I'm enjoying that. And then the NFL started again now, which we'll go into again in a minute. Um, but um, it's uh, Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning in the final. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be shooting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going for the stars because they've got a couple of old uh, Ducks players in there, Cogliano and uh, Corey Perry. So hopefully they can uh, get it done. But if they don't, I don't really care. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Benny, what about you? Who are you going for? As a Leafs fan, you're a little bit, you know, let down again. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, this Stanley Cup is a bit of a joke anyway, so I don't really care who wins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's my I mean, if, if, if the Leafs were there, then it would be a different story. Um, I'm going for stars in six. Mike? Yeah, so as a Red Wings fan, um, yeah, share share um, Benny's opinion there a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go for Lightning. I've watched quite a lot of their games and I don't know, I fancy them to, 
to dominate, but I don't know what last night's score was, but they probably they probably lost ten nil. Don't know. Okay. Um Dan, is it is it worth asking you your opinion on this? Do you, do you want to make one up? Uh Liverpool. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um what about do you know what? How about we should we designate Dan a an NHL team to follow? What do you reckon? You you happy for us to do that, Dan? Mm, how about uh give me a team and uh, this can be a work in process. You can quiz me on the team. Okay. So, how how do you? What's the best way to come up with a team for him? Uh, what's your favourite colour? It's got to be red. red wings, isn't it? I don't think it should be the same as any of our teams. I think. All oh, right, man. Uh... I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's carry on with the podcast. I'll just search NHL teams and whoever's yeah. logo that I like. That's a great. That's a good way of doing it. Yeah. That's yeah. a good way of doing it. Okay, well, so let's say you know, uh, I remember when I picked an NFL team, I did pick the Buccaneers, and then realised they are owned by the same people who own Manchester United. Uh, they are. <laughs> uh, I'm done. And, um, I'm out. <laughs> so who who is your NFL team? Um, we've spoken about football. Atlanta before. Hey, eh? I think we've spoken about Atlanta. You, you've had, you yeah. had a, did you have an Atlanta jersey growing up? I like, yeah, I got uh, basically when um, when my dad competed over in Atlanta in '96. Um, he bought me back this this t shirt, and when I was age five, it was literally as long as me. Um, it was yeah. the Atlanta Falcon. That's that it. Right? Yeah, that's so it. Yeah, I yeah. That shirt. I do have that shirt, so I suppose I suppose it's probably them. Yeah, mm -hmm. their, their jerseys and uh, are really really nice. Uh, yeah. that's, that's a big thing for me. So, yeah, go for it, Atlanta Atlanta Falcons. Um, check so, out check out Seattle, Dan. Okay. Hockey. Oh yeah, they're the new team. Maybe that maybe yeah. that's the route to go. The Seattle yeah. Kraken. But let him, we'll let him decide. Yeah. Um, so going speaking of Seattle, Benny, you've sort yeah. of um, we're talking NFL still here now. Um, you you've sort of um, gone with this uh, the Seattle Seahawks as your team. Bought you the jersey as as a thank you for doing my garden. Um, what what made you like like them? Um, <clears throat> so I saw their green kit, their lime green kit, and went, "Oh, I like that." And I think it was as basic as that. To be honest, was yeah. I saw a bright colour and I went, "I want that one." Yeah. That's good. I want that one. I want that one. I want Big that game. one. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it in his voice. <laughs> um, um, big game tonight against the Patriots. Um, yep. Obviously, they haven't got Brady anymore, uh, but the um, Cam uh, quarterback for them, they, they overcame my mighty Dolphins last week, somehow, some way. Um, well, how do you, you back them this week? Do you reckon they, they can... Do it. Yeah, so I mean, I've had I've had conversations with um, some people throughout the week. I mean, our uh, our defenseman Daryl Clark is a Patriots fan, yeah. um, and he's backing the Seahawks. So I, I, think, I think that's a pretty bold statement that we already want to know uh, as the season goes. And uh, we play the Patriots tonight, and um, both myself, obviously, and Daryl, uh, and now yourself as well, can see the Seahawks going two and zero for the season. Yeah, good. Um, I don't back the Dolphins to do much tonight um, against the Bills. I think they'll be the. I think the Bills possibly favourites for our division, along with our division has the uh, the Patriots and the uh, New York Jets in. Um, we've obviously got Tua Tungavaila uh, as our draft pick quarterback, but he didn't play last week. He's not starting this week. I think we're very much a work in progress. I'm looking more probably into next season. Uh, and beyond that for, you know, we'll blend in the new quarterback and uh, the new players. But we've got a good outline of something going forward. I'm, I'm very hopeful. So moving on from, from us, because there's nothing really else to talk about. Uh, I was going to ask, actually, because uh, NFL is just alien to me. Yeah. Never really watched it. Totally don't get it. But I would be willing to, like, start maybe watching it and... Well, what's a good place to start? I mean, I don't even know who the good teams are. I don't know the players. I don't even know the game. Okay, so, so what you're saying is you would like your own team to follow? 
is is that does that give you a starting point? Would you want to? Yeah, take? yeah. Am I going to go on my phone and do what Dan's doing and just pick a? Pick well, you could do, but would you go the same route as to say, look, you you're a Detroit Red Wings fan. Would you just stick with that area and go Detroit Lions, or would you like a different yeah. sort of? I mean, uh, the the Red Wings connection is really because I, I've gone a lot, uh, gone over to um, Grand Rapids a lot on business. So, obviously, the affiliation there between Grand Rapids it was uh, you know l logical to choose Red Wings. So, yeah, I suppose. I mean, how do they rate? How does uh, Detroit rate in terms of a? Um, not well. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> a bit like Red Wings. But the problem is. But that doesn't matter. That that doesn't matter too much because what you find is, and what you'll know through, relatively through ice hockey is the same, is you'll go through years of not doing a lot, but then a few good draft picks and, and good management in, in the GM's office, you know, and you'll get a few good players and you find yourselves back at the top again. Once you're at the top in American sports or Canadian sports with ice hockey, the only way is down. So the, when you get to the top, like so let's take the new um, the New England Patriots for example they've been very lucky in the fact that they've had probably the greatest ever quarterback in the game um, arguably Tom Brady and probably the greatest ever coach with him um, again arguably no in fact not the greatest coach Don Shula is the greatest ever coach uh, so what we're going to have we're on about American football there aren't we I was going to say Jurgen Klopp is definitely the best coach I'm talking American football yeah right, so cool. What are we, so, but anyway, he's had a really good coach with him and then they've, they've surrounded him with, with good talent throughout and that's made them really successful. So you're either going to have that where, you, where you, um, you're successful for a prolonged period of time or you work up to a championship so you maybe have one or two years of, of relative success. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So it, it's always a bit of a gamble, but you, you, the chances are that you'll pick a team I think you're better off to picking a team right now that aren't that great, but that means you've only got room to improve, and then you'll see you'll you'll appreciate both sides. Yeah. So I'm looking. It's the it's the Detroit Lions. Yeah. And actually, yeah, this grey, white, and blue. It's sort of similar to um, Vikings kit a bit. Um, yeah, I feel like we should go and buy the jersey straight away after this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, to show that you're truly into this yeah all right yeah well it looks like dan's come to some sort of um mm. conclusion <laughs> as well who are they what the the red the top one yeah that's the calgary flames okay they're my they're my new team oh brilliant that's not so, as good that's a good team to go for yeah so solid the, choice the yeah. Canadian calgary. team I've always, I, I have always seen myself as a, a Calgary flamer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, we're, we're only going from strength to strength now. You know, we've been knocking them hockey pucks around left, right and centre <laughs> all winter or whatever it is over there. Um, you know, we're doing really well. And I feel like, you know, solid mid-table uh, finish this year. And we'll probably... Make some good signings in the summer. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think you probably need them to be honest. But you'll, you, this the last season has been decent. Obviously, not made it to the Stanley Cup finals, but I don't think they were too bad last season. Were they? I can't remember. I didn't really take no, much notice. Of them. No, pretty good, solid. They've got some <laughs> solid. They've got some solid youngsters coming through as well. So I can see Calgary becoming pretty well in the next couple of seasons. To be fair, mm, good, good choice. Good choice. They have plenty of good battles with the Ducks as well. So. There'll be plenty of banter flying on those those nights. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, right, let's just talk uh, merchandise. Uh, the Vikings have stumbled across a merchandise range. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk to, to us through that a bit more? Yeah, it's something um, something the Vikings club are doing that um, uh, fairly small scale, and we've been well producing everything from. Oh, look, I, I've got some merch here. What happened to that? Oh. Eh? Um, so we've got like mouse mats, well that's a table mat and hats and uh, say mouse mats and just basically anything you can think of. We've got any pretty mats? well put some, you what? Have you got any mouse mats? Oh, what, like this one here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll get it the right way up. So you know, basically anything you can think of we can pretty well put a vikings logo on and um personalize it with your name and number 
Um, so hats and you know beanie pom pom style hats as well. So, but the the spin off to that as well, we've been doing a lot of um, merch for Generate too, and mm -hmm. there's a little sort of um, store being compiled once um, once we're all properly back in the gym, and I think you the, the, there's a few offers as well, Dan, isn't there? Indeed. So we've been at the gym, you know, obviously um, we've got different different things in the pipeline, hats, t-shirts, key rings, mouse mats as well, um, <laughs> stuff like that. It's basically just, um, you know, what, what, what we want to do really, it's about just sort of getting the logo out there and getting people asking, oh, what's that? You know, it's, um, it's not a sort of money-making scheme as such. Uh, you know, we're also using things as prizes down at the gym. And for people who just excessively work hard as well, so just to reward people. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a fair comment there, Dan, because we're a few of us were at the um, Panthers um, kit sale yesterday, trying to pick up some cheap sticks and things. Uh, and one of the guys was wearing uh, a Vikings face mask. Mm. It what well, did generate a bit of interest. People were asking straight away, or you know, Vikings ball hockey. Where are you back? Well, obviously for Nottingham, but. Um, so yeah, it's it's very much about that really, trying to generate a bit of interest for the club and you know um, publicise the club as well. Mm. Cool. Brilliant, that's good. That's interesting. Vikings merchandise is out there, everyone. Where can they get where where can they get hold of it? The easiest thing to do is to go on the website, which I'll add a little bit to come up on under the screen now. But um, Nottingham N O T T M Vikings dot com. And then you can go and look at the pages. You can see all the merch on there. And you can also place some orders by email as well. And, yeah, just have a have a look, see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Brilliant. Get on there, get some stuff. What more could you want for Christmas this year than some Vikings or even Generate merchandise? Let's yeah, if you, if you can't get a decent sort of uh, anniversary card, then, you know, for your partner, should be absolutely dead chuffed to get a, um, a lovely Vikings mug. For Christmas, <laughs> or even or even the the little shirts you stick in your car with your name on the back. Yeah, yeah, or you know, there's even these little flags that you can just hang up above the bed or something. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, what more would you want? <laughs> Do they come in all sizes? Uh, what the flags? Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just move it closer. So, but um, yeah. yeah. So um, anything you can think of, really. In fact, I'm just thinking, I haven't done scarves yet. We could do scarves as well. There we go. As long as they're not half and half. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're not doing that. So, brilliant. Right. Um, we're going to go back to you, Dan. It's obviously, we spoke earlier about how Generate sort of come, hopefully now, out the other side of lockdown. And it's been a pretty exciting time. You just want to talk to us about what's been happening at Generate and what we've got ahead. Yeah, so obviously we opened the doors again uh, to the gym, uh, which was great. You know, we got people, um, kids and adults training uh, down at the gym and also the Vikings guys as well. Um, you know, we've, um, as I said before, we were quite sort of resilient in the fact that we were taking our sessions outdoors, uh, which meant us sort of sticking a load of weights and bars and, and bags and all kinds in the back of a car and taking it to a field and taking it to tennis courts around Leicestershire. Um, you know, and we've, you know, we've done, we, we've done all right. We've survived. However, the dynamic has completely changed uh, down at the gym um, in a good way because, you know, you've now got the access to all, all the kit, you know, where, where we are like under one roof. So, you know, it's, you know, we've now got like sleds, ski machine, assault bike, you know, row machine you know we've got all the kit that we couldn't take with us as well um which you know gives us um added added effect in the sessions you know and it's um it, it really opens doors in other ways and so that that's been really good uh and also the the structure of the gyms actually fully changed as well so you know due to you know the regulations and stuff uh one really good thing that's come out of that for us is the fact that we now we we have regulations that only we can only have so many people down at the gym at once so what we did is we uh, are working now on a booking system uh, so there's an app uh, that people can use to book in and they pay their monthly membership now uh, which is a lot easier and a lot better for us as well um which we, we can plan for how many people are turning up 
Uh, we know exactly who's going to be in there and what time. Um, which, yeah, so that, that's that's really, really helped us out massively. So, you know, I can literally, 20 minutes before the session, look on the app. Yeah, there's eight people coming down. Brilliant. Set up for eight. You know, and it's, uh, so yeah, that's that's been really, really helpful. Um, you know, the gym's gone from, you know, we had uh, about 45 active members before lockdown. Um, you know, we, we managed to engage with only like a very small number over the lockdown period. Uh, however, them numbers are starting to come and creep back up as well. So uh, we will find ourselves at capacity again very soon. Uh, but there is bigger, better things coming for Generate in the near future. Fingers crossed. Yeah, did you did you want to have a... Um, there's obviously various classes that are going on at the moment. Did you just want to have a quick uh, overview of what, what classes you're in currently? A quick plug. A quick yeah. plug. Go yeah. for it. Uh, so yeah, so we've um, obviously we work with uh, children uh, and adults of all abilities. Um, you know, we really pride ourselves in a um, a gym, a friendly friendly uh, place, safe place to to train. Uh, you know, we're good coaches, and we um, you know we we now offer a full program Monday to Friday. Um, and yeah, so we run Monday is boxing for all. Uh, so we have kids, different age groups, um, learning the fundamentals of boxing and getting a good workout um, off the end of it. Because me and Pete are now um, Hatton Boxing Academy trained as well. Um, so we, we did a qualification during the period uh, to make us um, official boxing coaches, let's say. Um, and getting some experience in there, which was really good fun. Um, Tuesday... Um, we run a kids fit session where basically it's a bit like CrossFit for kids, but teaching kids the fundamentals behind different movements, exercises, and techniques, um, coupled with a hip session for the adults, uh, which is basically high intensity interval training, uh, which is a lot like circuit training. Um, Wednesday we have a session, which is, it was really fun actually this week. It's the first time we ran it called kids versus adults, um, where we, uh, take, uh, a it's it's more fun this one it's more of a challenge uh, so you know it can be uh, this week we did for example each kid and each adult had to push the sled up and down uh, as as many times as they could in one minute we then sort of add them all together and average them out to see who can win the exercise um, so that's a good one on a Wednesday Thursday same again kids fit uh, different age groups and uh, we do the slow burner for the adults, which is teaching adults, once again, the fundamentals of lifting and giving them a bit of a, a strength training base as well, which me personally, I think should be in the core of everyone's program, uh, not just running yourself into the ground, you know, being strong, um, you know, not talking about, you know, putting ridiculous weights on a bar, but actually learning how to lift properly, you know, can have such big 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 benefits uh, for your life and then on friday um it's a real good fun one on friday it's another um three sessions of boxing uh, for the kids uh, different age groups uh, but the last session for the adults is what we've called the lock-in uh where we've got pete on the decks um don't know if anyone knows this pete's a dj as well um he sort of gets behind the decks and uh, spins a few uh, sort of party tunes. Uh, we whack the speakers up dead loud, whack the lights off, get all the disco lights on the go, and we just burpee the night away, basically. Um, feedback, um, you know, even for me personally, like, you know, I, I love going out. I love going, um, you know, going out to like a club or just listening to music. So, you know, it's combining my two sort of biggest you know enjoyments of exercise and also you know doing that side of things and at the minute nightclubs are shut so we might as well just bring the nightclub to the gym so but yeah it's been great it's been really good first week on the membership and um yeah we're just going to keep going keep going keep moving forward yeah i think what you're saying is there's um plenty of exercise and plenty of fun to be had down at generate academy is that what you're saying dan i, I think so yeah uh, <laughs> We need that on a t-shirt for you, Pete. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, my favourite trade. Yeah. Joke there for everyone. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, down as part of our package, you know, we like to give people uh, some information, some videos on what we're doing. And Pete, in a sort of 
nervous twitch sort of fashion was struggling to finish any of his videos without <laughs> the phrase. Plenty of exercise, plenty of fun. With Pete Allen. With Pete Allen, yeah. Didn't have the Good. with Pete Allen bit at the end, but I think that might be going on a t shirt soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, it, it's but it was. I mean, I was away off obviously for most of the week, I did a bit of Monday and then on Friday as well. But um, it has been a really good first week of that timetable down at Generate, and um, yeah, it, it's it's growing and it's really great to be uh, a part of so. Hopefully that all continues. Uh, just quickly to finish, Dan, as well, um, a bit of an update on the Viking sessions. How are you, how are you seeing the lads improve now in, in the sessions there and what you've been doing with them? Yeah, it's great. Um, we've been, uh, as I just said there, as part of the programme that we run at Generate, uh, you know, we've been doing uh, bits of um, weights training, uh, so strength training, uh, as well as really pushing it on the cardio front as well. Um, so, um, you know, being back in the gym is really going to change the dynamic of every session we do uh, with the lads. Um, you know, even just being back the last couple of weeks, it's really been like, wow, we can we can push it now. And, and it's also being back in the gym. I know uh, Benny mentioned this the other day about what seeing the lads from week one uh, when, you know, when we were in the gym. So then having to close the gym down and then you know, last week going back in the gym and really, I know Benny, you mentioned about seeing the improvements from the lads as well. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just the fact that their approach to um, uh, lifting and how much they're able to lift. And I know you got them doing deadlifts and chest presses and all sorts over the last few weeks. And just seeing how they are sticking to the technique, but really lifting and pushing themselves further. It's showing me that actually there's plenty in the tank now that they can uh, deliver in a get on a game day, so it's great to see. It really is De definitely sort of creating. Uh, not obviously, <laughs> Benny. Your job is to make make them into better, ho better hockey players. However, with the work that they've been doing with me, they're actually you know all the lads are actually you know get turning into better athletes as well. So you know, and that's the plan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, then we're going to take over the world. Exactly. <laughs> but um, I think we've said it before, Dan, but obviously speaking on behalf of the, uh, obviously Benny, Mike and, and the rest of the Vikings, we, we couldn't thank you enough for the, for the work you're doing with us. Um, and the, the sessions are, are absolutely first class and we're, we're privileged to, to have that. And um, from a Generate point of view also, uh, with obviously the new timetable and everything that you've done um, along with myself, Harry, but primarily yourself and how you set it up, um, it's it's a first class thing to be a part of and um just want to say well done to you and i'm sure mike and benny will echo that for everything that you've done to bring generate academy forward up until this point cheers yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, no <laughs> okay I'll take all that, take all that back but um no seriously <laughs> fantastic stuff well done um that's all we've got time for so um we've got the calgary flames have grown a fan the Detroit Lions have grown a fan and uh, so have uh, CLC or so it's been a productive podcast uh, thanks for everyone for watching or listening you can listen again on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts or on the YouTube channel uh, we'll see you again very soon take care goodbye mm -hmm.